What is neocolonialism? Broadly construed, the term neocolonialism refers to the control of less developed countries by developed ones through indirect means. It was first used after World War II to refer to the continuing dependence of former colonies on foreign countries. However, its meaning soon broadened to apply, more generally, to places where the power of developed countries was used to produce a colonial-like exploitation. A concrete example of this is the Philippines. Although the Philippines gained independence from the United States in 1946, it continues, up until now, to be controlled albeit in a subtle way by the latter through the imposition of unequal treaties and trade agreements, especially with the intrusion and penetration of transnational corporations in the country. It is important to note that the term neocolonialism is now an unambiguously negative one that is widely used to refer to a form of global power in which transnational corporations and global and multilateral institutions combine to perpetuate colonial forms of exploitation of developing countries. In fact, neocolonialism has been broadly understood as a further development of capitalism that enables capitalist powers, both nations and corporations, to dominate subject nations through the operations of international capitalism rather than by means of direct rule. As we can see, Neocolonial governance is seen as operating through indirect forms of control and, in particular, by means of the economic, financial, and trade policies of transnational corporations and global and multilateral institutions. Critics argue that neocolonialism operates through the investments of multinational corporations that, while enriching a few in underdeveloped countries, keep those countries, as a whole in a situation of dependency. Such investments also serve to cultivate underdeveloped countries as reservoirs of cheap labor and raw materials. International financial institutions such as the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank also are often accused of participating in neocolonialism by making loans, as well as other forms of economic aid, that are conditional on the recipient countries taking steps favorable to those represented by these institutions, but detrimental to their own economies. Thus, although many people see these corporations and institutions as part of an essentially new global order, the notion of neocolonialism sheds light on what, in this system and constellation of power, represents continuity between the present and past. Historically speaking, the term neocolonialism was originally applied to European policies that were seen as schemes to maintain control of African and other dependencies. The event that marked the beginning of this usage was a meeting of European heads of government in Paris in 1957, where six European leaders agreed to include their overseas territories within the European Common Market under trade arrangements that were seen by some national leaders and groups as representing a new form of economic domination over French-occupied Africa and the colonial territories of Italy, Belgium and the Netherlands. The agreement reached at Paris was codified in the Treaty of Rome in 1957, which established the European Economic Community, or Common Market. 